Okay. Uh, we're back. We have no idea what's going on with that. Sorry, you guys. I mean, it's funny. The CPU is fine. The bandwidth is fine. The little time clock is moving. Everything's working. And for whatever reason, even the light on the camera was on and it stopped. So it's, it's and it's not my um, operating system. Anyway, uh, no idea. Anyway, so. Uh, Let's go back to that thing not being forwarded. Now, obviously, I yeah. don't know exactly what the listing said. I'm guessing it was for a film and TV thing. I don't remember. But Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it was so frenetic that it would never work under dialogue or with voiceover. And it was almost like a tour de force of, well, this is incredibly good, but in the application. Right. And there were parts of it that sounded pretty Coldplay-ish, and there were parts of it that sounded like... Jeff Steinman was Doing, being a composer, having right. a good time. And, and actually, when I originally composed this, I used the, it was before I had our guitar library, the Warp 4 electric guitar library. So I was using the uh, electric guitar library that was in Contact, that comes okay. with Contact. And it was so bad and noisy. And so then I replaced it. But of course, you know, you just replace the library. And I didn't go back. And a lot of the articulations are just a little bit kind of repetitive. It's not as Big so I would have, have never picked that out, but you're the guy so who made things, it. So you're there's hearing things where yeah. I can I can hear things that aren't quite perfect with it. But I didn't want to just play orchestral things for everybody. All right, uh, let's see. I think I'm because of time. I'm going to move on. I was going to play you just the bass and the drums, but let's move on. Um, yeah. Again, sorry for. I mean, this is, is it's not bandwidth on our end. It's not my laptop. Um, my CPU is only operating at 14% capacity on my computer, so I'm guessing it's a Ustream thing. Um, don't know, but we will just happens again. Um, I'm gonna check my broadcast settings and make sure. Oh, I can't change things. I didn't want to change. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are you gonna move on right. to? So this one is called Percolate, and what's interesting about this one is um, it was also rejected by Taxi, and the reason was, and, and it was subsequently signed in a library, in another library. Okay. Um, and the reason was, as soon as the vocals came in, uh, so I was using a sample library that does shooby doo kind of okay. stuff. I didn't even know they had those. Yeah. Library. Uh, they said, oh, that would never work, you know, with uh, any kind of uh, dialogue. It would, it would conflict with it. And I'm like, you know, it's just push one button and I turn that off. And uh, right, so I ended up submitting. Is, yeah, the, I, I don't disagree with it. So you took it out and then submitted it to I, the I library. I submitted it to the library and they took both versions and they were happy to have it. Okay. But I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And, and the guy who um, created the sample library, it's called Really Vox, uh, the ladies. And uh, he was actually one of the uh, guys with me at the rally last year that was a, a oh. sponsor. Yeah, what was his Mike name? Mike Green. Yeah. And uh, the guy who, who developed that library actually won an Emmy for uh, composing the song for Bill Nye the Science Guy. And it was kind of fun. The, the uh, theme song? Yeah, the Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill <laughs> Nye the Science Guy, you know, so it was kind of fun. Anyway, so when you hear the vocals, uh, that's from his library. So this is quirky.
that's shooby dooby doo wop and each one of those is uh, an articulation that I'm choosing when I go uh, shooby dooby doo wop um, I think someone asked do I uh, do music, music full time no I, I work on the weekends I run a software company that's my uh, full time job and I on the side I also produce sample libraries and your PhD is in physics in high energy physics particle physics what do you do with one of those um, PhDs uh, do you build uh, nuclear reactors well some that would be low energy the nuclear stuff but What's I was high, high energy? energy that's um, uh, it's actually elementary particles like things Good, speak english things like yeah. Forks and, yeah i don't <laughs> there's 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 high energy particles <laughs> right there in that rock star there we go. Uh, yeah but no so really, seriously what do you do with a phd in high energy um particles? well you know i actually when i got out of college i um i knew i wasn't going to do physics i didn't want to do physics actually and um but i got i started working at jpl caltech yeah and in supercomputing okay. and uh, after a couple of years or so, I invented some technologies that took off and um, got a bunch of patents and um, solved problems on, you know, running on these massively parallel supercomputers with, you know, hundreds, thousands of processors. Yeah. And how do you simulate things where anything can interact with anything at any time and yet it runs fast? And it's, it's, not, it's not an easy problem. And here's the kicker, right? Why are you on the show again? Like, You're way like, too smart to be. Oh, well, like five, five, six years ago, we invented this crazy technology, how to do simulation in five dimensions, right? So normally, world is four dimensions, three dimensions, so space, heard. and time. <laughs> yeah. And we figured out how when you run a simulation to get to a point where it could go in different ways to actually explore both. It would be like um, in real life. Let's suppose you are... are you come to a point in your life when you make a decision. You can yeah. go that way or you can go that way. Right. I but saw the if, movie Sliding Doors. Yeah. What if you could do both? And now you've kind of like split into two worlds. And one of you is in this world, the other you is in this world. And the rest of the world doesn't even care. You know, but as soon as someone in the rest of the world interacts with you, the question is what timeline are they interacting with? And right. all that kind of crazy back to the future, time going forwards, backwards, it's nuts. <laughs> but uh, it's, anyway, so that's what and, I do. And, for, and, and hence we have on. the Google driverless car that makes decisions yeah. on how fast it's going. Now, now, this song that I just played for you, by the way, I put this together in an afternoon. So this was not like a two-day thing. This was just an afternoon. It was yeah, really I mean, easy to put it together. It, it, it sounded easier. Yeah. There weren't that many parts in it. No, it was pretty easy. And I was really just testing our very cute uh, guitar very library. Perfect. All right, now I want to play you something. Um, uh, this one here, um, what, I, what I want to show you is um, if you change the tempo while, while the song is going, speed it up, slow it down, that also gives kind of a more real feel to it, and you'll, yeah. you'll hear. Um, and so uh, maybe uh, if you can kind of like go like this and try to uh, follow the tempo, I can see there's a delay, so if I do it, it probably won't. If you follow me, it won't work. But uh, but you know, see if you can track the tempo and you feel as as it's speeding up and slowing down. And it's a very simple. Uh, this piece. isn't the one we're guessing the time. No, no. Okay. So slowing down.
classic 1940s cartoon piece. Going up the staircase. Sure. Okay, so this one here, um, uh, it, it was featuring the solo of Vienna Symphony Library strings, so uh, uh, you can hear that. And in a few places, I brought in the Appassionata mm -hmm. also to fill it in. Um, the more legato stuff? The, when you heard just the, uh, I believe I brought in, in just, yeah, yeah, it was very just a, subtle, it was yeah. very, very subtle. Um, and then the uh, piccolo was from the Vienna Symphony Library piccolo. Um, anything else that I need to say all right so I want to play that first so you hear the effect of changing the tempo mm -hmm. and now I want to play for you uh, my version of the Star Spangled Banner and before we do this I need to apologize to anyone who feels like I'm uh, you know disrespecting the Star Spangled Banner um, whenever I do kind of like a, a, a rearrangement of something that everybody already knows I never do it straight I always have to change something uh, otherwise, to me, it's it's kind of a waste of time to do it. Okay. I got a phone call. So don't consider this a political statement. Yeah, please don't. You know we uh, don't do politics on the show. And, and the background of this, I got a phone call from... They're doing the Jackie Robinson story, and they need the Star Spangled Banner, and I need it immediately. And I said, well, what, what are they looking for? I mean, is it like, you know, do you want a marching band? Do you, what do you want? And I'm thinking, and she said, I have no idea. This is for the movie 43, right? I, Yes. Uh, uh, um, was that Jackie Robinson? I, that's all I was told. It okay. was for the Jackie Robinson movie. And I'm thinking, you know, it's kind of crazy. Why would they go to a sample library you know, or, or to a, a production library yeah. for something in a big movie? And, and what are they really even looking for? And so I'm thinking, all right, Jackie Robinson, he probably loves his country, but he also feels sad. There's, there, maybe there's some emotion here. And so I wanted to do a very, very sad... You don't watch a lot of sports, uh, do you, Jeff? No, oh, I do, but I... I don't, but even you know, I know I that what they're looking for is well, the national anthem at the beginning of a ball game. Well, so what I thought was... Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> and of course, it didn't get for It didn't get used. Okay. Um, but, you know, just what, what am I thinking when I wrote this? And, uh, you know, you could think of this as um, playing the Star Spangled Banner on the, on the Titanic as it's sinking. <laughs> Maybe that's another way to, uh, okay. to uh, think of it. But um, what I'm using in this or, library... Or maybe Upper Britannia, depending on where you are, you know, which, uh, where you are in the, your GPS coordinate. <clears throat> so uh, the, the instruments here, it's all uh, the Vienna Symphony Library solo strings and the Appassionata strings. That's all that, that's in this... The um, whole piece? There's the whole nothing, piece. No There's per nothing else. Okay. So, and, and I'm not doing anything with the volume control. It's all just switching different articulations. And you'll hear when, um, uh, like, the violins are, are sliding between the notes. That's true legato. So you're hearing, you know... The actual players play that in play the Play that interval. That, yeah, okay. and then the slide. So. Yeah, you're right. It was 42, not 43. I must have been thinking of one of the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go.
cool. I actually guessed right. Well, it was the, an educated guess. I leaned over and asked Jeff if that was a bowed double bass, which you rarely hear, and it was, and it sounded really cool. Yeah. Um, I like the piece. I mean, not exactly right for a baseball movie, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it got me thinking, who knows when did Francis Scott Key compose the Star Spangled Banner? Because I was going to say this would have been great in Lincoln. I thought it was during the War of eighteen twelve. I think you're right. Um, I, I was trying. I was running the numbers in my head, thinking this would have been great for a scene in Lincoln. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, so that's, I, I just that's... write the Star Spangled Banner. There's a million versions of it. Why would anybody pick mine? You know. And so even if it's not used in the movie, I don't care. I, I want. I want something that's going to be unique. Yeah, who knows pretty cool like I said you could uh, um, in, in Lincoln where you know all the generals and officers uh, were at a ball somewhere dancing with their wives uh, and you sure. could have had Lincoln having a moment where he's having a patriotic moment or thinking about the boys who lost their lives in the war this would have been a great piece as he walk out on, on the back porch of the plantation or whatever all right now, we're, I know time is getting short. Do we have to like 5.30? Yeah, I mean, you know, okay. I've gone longer. But, uh, All yeah. right, so I'm going to just do uh, two more. And the, the last one will be the one with the odd time signature. Okay, and, and remember, um, we're um, the first person that blurts out the correct time signature is going to get a copy of uh, which one of your Screaming Trumpet original awesome. library. And that library I used to sell for $300. Uh, now I practically actually give it away. Well, you will we be have today. The, the Screaming Trumpet Pro, where it, most of the composers want the full one. But this, the original one, I did tons of, of stuff with it, and it, it's an amazing library. Cool. So you'll like it. All right, so this is another big band one, but I, uh, I'm featuring the electric guitar. So uh, you'll listen Again, to not it. a real electric, well, not an electric guitar yeah. being played by a dude. Yeah, or nothing, a no real players. And uh, listen to, you'll hear the trumpet going da 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 and a crescendo, and then a big shake. Okay. That big shake is a release trigger. That's, I'm putting that at the end of the note. So when the note finishes, it does the shake. So you can't, can, do you drag and drop it? Like you yeah, would uh, well, a transition just, in iMovie or something? The, the, way, the way it works is I, I do the, the crescendo note. So I do mm -hmm. the key switch to select the crescendo. And then before the note ends, I hit another key switch to say, oh, oh when it ends, do a shake at the end of it. And you can put falls at the end of any, you know, you can do anything you want with these right. release triggers. And you, you don't see these release triggers. Like Vienna Symphony Library doesn't have release triggers that you can control, right? So you just get your orchestral, you know, the note goes and it ends. And they might actually, at the end of the note, actually play a tiny little sample that uh, is the way the note ended, mm -hmm. right? So when you record it, the sample, they get the very end, chop it off, and then stick it at the end of notes. Wow. Right, so that you can have a natural sounding release. Right. But when you're doing jazz, you don't just end the note yeah. normal. You there's all kinds of things you do at the ends of notes. So listen to the crescendo on the trumpet in, in, near the beginning with that release trigger, and the release triggers are all over the place. Um, and then there's a guitar solo coming in. Hopefully, I did okay on it. I know a lot of you guys are guitar players, and I'm not. So hopefully, I I'll do it justice. <laughs> To all the uh, the way the guitar is attacking the notes, and there's um, see if you can catch all the different attacks. No, I'll be the next. blurting it out. I'm going, That's not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Overly enthusiastic. 
a shake with a fall on it. There's a fall release trigger on a shake. Impressive. I've got to say, um, I'm sure if we listen to you know Steve Morris or Joe Satriani side by side, yeah, you could tell the difference. But in the context of somebody looking for a piece for a TV show, uh, all right, Here's most a... most people would not listen to that and go, "That was played out of a box." So, right. It, good job. You know, because really it's good bending, job. It's, uh, yeah. there's mordants, there's trills, there's all kinds of slides at the end of the notes. And I'm just entering the notes with the mouse and doing my thing. Yeah, remember that. Everything you've heard on the show today <laughs> is done with the mouse. All right. And so, by the way, that was not the one you were supposed to get no. the time signature on. <laughs> Jeff and I were sitting here going, why are we seeing all these 15 <laughs> eights and 4 4s and yeah, uh, 8 30 second? Yeah. Anyway. Okay, but is this the one? This is the one now. See okay. if you can figure it out. Okay, um, you're going to have to watch this scroll by with me because right. the first person that gets the time signature right is right. going to win it. Here we go. Nobody got it. I, I was guessing 12-8, but I saw somebody else guess that, and he said they didn't get it. So what do we do? Um, um, 
uh, I guess we could pick somebody randomly, but yeah, first yeah. got to tell us what this right, time right. signature is. <clears throat> so um, it's actually 7677. So it's in 27. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let me play it again. I'll count it for you, and you can, you All can right. hear it. One, two. Let me start over again. So, you know, sevens are always a combination of three and four, right? Okay. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hopefully, you guys, we'll, we'll just pick something. So, but what did you say it was again? It was in 27. And somebody pointed out Don Ellis. Yeah. And Don Ellis, I think, had a song that was in like 27 and two thirds. And it was unbelievable. I, and I loved Don Ellis growing up. That was one of, uh, in fact, I was in a band where his girlfriend was one of the singers in our band. It was kind of, kind of weird. But Where'd you grow up? Santa Monica. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love Don Ellis. He never did anything straight. I'm still trying to figure out where the 20 was. Well, it, it's 7, 6, right. 7, uh, 7. Same. So it's 7, 6, 13, 7, 7, 14. This is like a musical SAT test. You're making my head hurt. <laughs> What's scary is we're going out to grab dinner after the show tonight, mm. and I'm going to have to listen to this stuff all the way through dinner. Uh. Um, <laughs> I mean, damn. Um, um, I don't even know what your SAT score was. <laughs> I never took the SAT. Really? I never took it. Okay. They didn't have a score high enough? No, for you? because I started college, I was a music major. Oh. And, you know, they I felt to... sorry for you? <laughs> no, I, you know, my grades in high school, it was such a joke, really. Actually, my senior year, it's, it would start off, uh, seven to eight was marching band. Yeah. Eight to, to nine ja uh, was concert band. Um, 11 to 12 was orchestra. Yeah. Then during lunch, I was just pr I would practice all lunch, and then one to two was jazz band, and then I didn't have a sixth period because I'd taken enough summer school. Wow. I'd go home, I'd play drums for an hour or so, and then I'd practice the trumpet for three or four more hours. I did that every day, and you know I my goal. And was, how did you end up with a PhD? And what is it again? Particle yeah, physics. Yeah, you know when I started college, um, suddenly I wasn't like the most incredible trumpet player in the world. There were a lot of good trumpet players. And, um, you know, I took a bunch of music uh, courses, but one of the classes I took was a computer science class. Yeah. And I was the only, I think, non-computer scientist in the class, and I had the highest grade in the class. Wow. And the teacher was just like, this doesn't make sense. The highest grade in the class isn't even a, you know, he's a music major, what's wrong with, <laughs> you know? But well, uh, music is math. I came to a point when I, I realized I don't want to teach music in high school. I don't want to be a high school band director. Yeah. And it, this is going to be hard. And if I'm going to succeed, I have to devote everything to what I'm going to do. Because I'm not going to go into music if I'm just going to be run of the mill. I'm, right. I'm just not going to do it. And I was willing to uh, do the effort, but then I'd have to give up everything else. And that decision weighed on me. And I thought, why can't I just enjoy music? And you are do. making your own libraries. I mean, yeah. that's hard work. It is hard, actually. And it's crazy. And anybody out there thinking about doing it, please don't. You're, unless you really <laughs> have this passion, because you're not going to make any money. And uh, it's, it's really laborious. But in the end, it actually, um, for me anyway, it's kind of fulfilling to get a product out and know it's good. Well, it's more than impressive, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. Um, but, by the way, there, there was one uh, question, what is our website? Yeah, go it's ahead, blur it up. W-A-R-P-I-V, Roman numeral 4, dot com. Uh, and that's our my, my uh, supercomputing website, but it'll take you over to our music. If you want, you can go directly to our music website. It's warp4, warp music.com. And um, the other thing is, if anybody's interested in uh, the libraries that we've produced, I've been giving taxi members a 50% discount. Is there a code they and, have to put in? Uh, it, I think, I don't remember if it's, and by the way, I think what's on there for taxi, I'll take even more off. I think what's on there 
We normally, like I said, sell the full Hollywood Studio Brass and Woodwind collection for $1,000. And at the last road rally, I sold it for $500. And I'll, I'll honor that too. Just send me an email. Uh, you know, let me know if, if you have trouble with the website. Um, and we're hoping, we're, we're working hard trying to get ready for the next rally. Where, <laughs> uh, hopefully, I'm starting to wake up in the know, morning horrified uh, again. Hopefully we'll be able to sponsor, be a sponsor Great. again. Great, would love to have you back. And I'm hoping to get our electric bass library out, which will be a perfect complement to the uh, electric guitar library. And uh, the most important thing is trying to get the killer bongos library out because because uh, there's so many people that need bongos well you know i hit those bongos in every way you could imagine so it's, it's like a crazy bongo library well somewhere at home i've got very old recordings of jocko from back in the 70s um so some somehow i have a feeling i can't license you those recordings but i actually i lived in fort lauderdale and jocko was kind of a you know, see you at the studio all the time kind of guy. Yeah. I used to pay Jocko Pistorius fifty dollars wow. a track to play on demos for me wow. before he was famous. But I do have old Jocko recordings. Wow. Um, yeah, we should put those on there. Okay, so here's the deal. Everybody, type your name in just one time. Please don't type your name in, or you know, just do a plus one. Where are you going? I'm just want to make sure. Uh, hang don't, on a second. Because you're going to pick the winner. Okay, but. I actually brought two. Ah, okay. Just want to All make right. sure. So, so everybody type in a plus one, and I will turn this way and run my pen up and down the screen, and Jeff will tell me where I land. All right. So I'll wait for the delay so that the plus ones can start coming in. Okay, here they come. Type faster, type faster. All right. Uh, I'm we've got I think you've got, uh, boy, I went too fast. Oh. Pout, uh, there was something, pout something. And Lido Man, how's that? Okay, as long as we can figure out who the pot was. Lido Man. Go back. Uh, yeah, again, it jumps a lot. Oh boy! Wow, that totally jumped. Yeah, uh, take it back down to the bottom. Who is just? Uh, pouty person. Um, type right, in your name again. Has to so stop because it's now scrolling off the thing. <laughs> Okay. There it is. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Poutnik Santiago. Okay. So. Poutnik Santiago. Poutnik Santiago. Okay. If you two people would be kind enough to email Sophia, S O F F I A, Sophia at taxi.com and let her know that you are, in fact, uh, Lido Man and Poutnik Santiago. Uh, and please, don't anybody send your stuff, you know, send her an email claiming to be those people when you're not. Um, there's always one joker in every crowd, and we will send you copies of Screaming Trumpet. The original. The original from Warp 4. Um, and, and maybe one other thing. Yeah. Um, if I do teach a, a class again at the Road Rally, Last couple times I've done it, I've also given away free libraries. So um, don't miss the Road Rally, November 6th through the 9th, coming up. Um, all right, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, I can't think of anything else, any other end camps. Thank you, uh, or end caps for the show. Thank you for you know bringing all this stuff and just for being a wealth of knowledge on this stuff and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know there was one guy who was complaining. Um, I haven't seen him, I think he left mid-show. Um, anyway, uh, thank you guys, thank you for joining us. Jeff, thank you very much. And now the only decision we have to make is sushi or Italian. See you guys next time on another episode of Taxi TV Live. <laughs> Bye you guys.